Former OU employees suing the Board of Regents, OU's annual holiday lighting ceremony taking place today, and a look at the weather for this holiday week. This is OU Nightly. Thank you for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Zach Verdia. And I'm Olivia Whitehead. It's Thanksgiving week, but you might want to break out your umbrella on Thursday. Marissa Nuzo joins us now with a first look at the forecast for the holiday. Marissa? Thanks, Olivia and Zach. Right now, temperatures across the nation were spanning 33 in Denver all the way down to 73 in Dallas right now. So we're a little bit all over the place and this nice weather here in Oklahoma is not going to last very long, though tonight will be pretty nice. We're in the 50s getting down into those low 40s by about midnight tonight and then Stay tuned because I have a lot to talk about with fire weather risk in western Oklahoma for tomorrow, rain and snow chances and how that could possibly impact your Thanksgiving travel later this week. So you don't want to miss it. Back to you guys. Thanks, Marissa. Well, police say two people were shot and wounded outside of the Greater New Zion Baptist Church today following a funeral service. Police Captain Larry Winthrow confirmed two were shot at the church northeast of downtown Oklahoma City. The vehicle was stopped by officers near the church, but no arrests were made. Pastor Reverend Kenneth Sherrill said that both victims are expected to survive. Saturday night, a former OU student was robbed in her off-campus apartment after letting a woman in to use the bathroom. The woman left the spare bedroom window unlocked before leaving, which later she used to regain entry. The items reported stolen include the student's purse, coat, and car. Um, so I feel more just kind of like not scared, but a little violated and uneasy. Um, just knowing that I was like that vulnerable. According to the student's credit card records, the suspect made purchases in Norman, Moore, and Oklahoma City. The police are still working to get security footage of the suspect. If you see a gray Honda CRV with Texas plates BHR3894, call the non emergency police phone number. And four employee OU employees are suing the Board of Regents after they were denied parts of their retirement benefits, according to a petition on the Oklahoma State Courts Network. Andrew Horton, Ginger Wetz, Neil Sunnison, and Cindy Cash are among those former employees suing the Board of Regents. The employees were denied access to their OU emails, which violates their retirement benefits. However, without access, it makes it harder to transfer all their information over to another email. And a special four-legged friend was honored as a hero at the White House today. His name is Conan, and he's the military dog who played an important role in the operation that killed ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. President Donald Trump praised the dog for his services. Conan is a tough cookie, and uh, nobody's going to mess with Conan. I Conan helped the special forces track al-Baghdadi through a tunnel during the mission and was injured, but has since made a full recovery. And over the weekend, a Navy secretary was fired by Secretary of Defense. Lindsey Gibbs has more in the News Center. Thanks, Olivia. The Secretary of Defense fired Navy Secretary Richard Spencer over a Navy SEAL controversy. Spencer was ousted for proposing a deal with the White House about the Navy SEAL without the Secretary of Defense Mark Esper's knowledge. Navy SEAL Edward Gallagher was acquitted of murder for stabbing a 12-year-old ISIS member, but convicted for taking a picture and posing with the child's body in 2017. An undocumented construction worker in New Orleans is being deported back to Honduras after almost 20 years of working in the States. His lawyers say the Hard Rock Hotel is retaliating for speaking out about the botched construction job the hotel had, which collapsed, killing three workers. The undocumented worker had complained to his supervisors five times about the mismanaged construction, telling them it was dangerous. If it's purely immigration based, he'll likely be deported and seeing what ICE has done even with other campaigns like this, um, unless something happens on the other, on the labor side of his claim, I don't see there being a way to stop his removal. Joel Ramirez Palma was detained by ICE two days after speaking to local Spanish newspaper about the disaster. 
And several people close to Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, have been subpoenaed with documents incriminating Giuliani and his consulting firm. The Wall Street Journal reports there is a large federal investigation regarding money laundering, obstruction of justice, and campaign finance violation. The Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office is already prosecuting two of Giuliani's associates for campaign finance crimes. Olivia and Zach, a German museum, was robbed of more than 100 royal jewels with the thieves still at large. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Lindsay. In Durham, North Carolina, there have been three shootings in less than 24 hours. The latest happening this morning at UNC Family Medicine. Officers found the body of a man and a woman outside of the building, but could not confirm if the shooting happened inside or outside. Durham police are not actively looking for a suspect at this time. And the death of a University of Illinois at Chicago College student is being ruled as foul play as officials continue investigating her death. Ruth George was found dead in the backseat of her family-owned vehicle over the weekend after reported missing Saturday morning to UIC police. Police say the kinesiology honor student entered the garage alone and then an individual entered soon after. The suspect is currently in custody and police say they have no affiliation with the university. The 1999 murder case of Hai Min Lee is making headlines again. The Supreme Court has declined to review the case of her convicted killer, Adnan Saeed. In 2000, Saeed was sentenced to life in prison after a witness said he helped Saeed bury Lee's body. The case was featured in a popular crime podcast serial, which inspired the support for a new trial. Saeed's lawyers say the decision is appalling, but they aren't giving up. Brush fires in New Wales are wiping out koala habitats. The danger these fires are bringing on, the, on these endangered species next. Plus, the university is launching the holiday season with a lighting ceremony. More on the event's festivities coming up. Wildfires and brush fires are devastating for residential areas, but often the wildlife, wildlife impact of the region can be overlooked. James Myers joins us in the Earth Report with details on how the Australian brush fires are destroying koala populations. Olivia and Zach, brush fires have wiped out about half the koalas living in a coastal reserve in New South Wales, Australia. The early and intense start to brush fire season brought about a blaze that destroyed two thirds of a koala habitat. It's estimated roughly 1000 koalas were killed from the flames already. Koalas are an endangered species, so animal caretakers are working hard to protect and save those still in danger from those brush fires. And then here back at home, Harvard versus Yale is one of the oldest rivalries in college football. This weekend, though, it was interrupted when protesters stormed the field at halftime. Students and alumni were protesting endowments given to the school from fossil fuel companies. The game was delayed for a half an hour until police arrived to escort the protesters safely off the field. Those protesting are calling for the schools to get rid of all endowments from any fossil fuel company. And finally, Colorado is a popular state for connecting flights in the U.S., but a strong storm is threatening to delay Thanksgiving travel plans. Today and tomorrow are weather alert days for Colorado since the state anticipates heavy snowfall from a winter storm. Already American, Delta, United, Southwest, and Frontier Jet Blue are giving travel waivers for flights in Colorado this week. If you're traveling with one of those airlines, be sure to check those flight statuses on the company's website. And Olivia and Zach, that's all from the Earth Report for this semester. You two have a wonderful holiday. Back to you at the desk. Well, thank you so much, James. More people are able to enjoy a Thanksgiving meal this year. How Norman and Food and Shelter is making this possible during their annual event. And Marissa Nuzza will give us another look at today's weather. Here in Oklahoma, we're expecting fire weather and rain and snow here in the next two days. I have all the details coming up right after this. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Marissa Nuzzo here with a look at your weather right now across the metro. We're in the 60s with clear skies. It's pretty nice out there right now, but there's a lot that's about to change. So James was talking about these storms out in Denver over Colorado that could possibly have an impact on travel through Colorado over the next few days. But also this same system is bringing a cold front here that's going to bring us some very gusty winds tomorrow and also this dry line, which means that we're going to have decreased moisture. And those two things together are a recipe for fire weather. After that, then we'll have this high pressure. And as it slowly moves out, 
look at all of this rain over Oklahoma throughout the day on Thanksgiving. So let's track that out. But first, let's look at that fire weather watch for all these counties in western Oklahoma that is active from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. tomorrow because those winds are so strong and that dry line is coming through. So let's stay away from grills. Let's stay away from bonfires just to be safe with these very gusty winds that will finally calm down as we move into Wednesday morning. Now let's track out the rain. So Tuesday, dry, very, very dry with that fire weather. Wednesday, we'll start to see it coming up from the south. Ardmore starting to get wet around 730 and that will move through. And these areas that were in fire weather for Tuesday are then at a risk for snow on Thursday, the whole day on Thanksgiving. So throughout the day on Thanksgiving, it'll taper off and then we'll have a few patchy showers up in the panhandle and then also off towards Tulsa as well. How much rain are we expecting? Upwards of an inch here in Norman and maybe even closer to two inches near Ardmore and McAllister. So all of this rain could have some impacts on your travel. Be careful when driving, have a little bit of extra time and be careful on those roads. Make sure you're looking for cars potentially parked on the side of the road. As for tomorrow, it's going to be a great day besides those winds gusting up to 45 here in Norman. Though we aren't under that fire weather risk, it's going to be very, very windy. High temperatures in the upper 60s here for the next couple of days. And then those rain chances move in Wednesday night and they just stick around all day Thursday for Thanksgiving. And that's also going to drop our temperatures into the low or into the upper 40s. So okay. rain all day on Thursday if you're driving maybe down to family in Dallas, up to family in Tulsa. Yes. Everybody across the whole state needs to be ready for some slower travel, take your time. Yeah, that's definitely something that I know I'm driving down to Dallas, so I need to prepare for that. I'm going for my the opposite sake. way. Yeah. yeah, I would say nothing too dramatic, mm -hmm. but if it's gonna be rainy, you know the trucks in front of you spray yes. all the water off the roads. You might have to drive a little bit slower, so just make yes. sure everybody's ready to take their time so you can get to your Thanksgiving dinner safely. And I did talk to a straight state trooper recently in Oklahoma and she did say with all the travel, it is a lot more dangerous when the weather does come in and you do have those rainy chances, so. Right, everybody's trying to book it to grandma's, but they're fast. <laughs> It'll be okay. Well, perfect. Make it in one piece. Thank you so much, Marissa. Well, just a few days from now, people will be gathering around the table for Thanksgiving dinner and the Norman Food and Shelter will have more than enough food to share. This year's the 36th annual Thanksgiving dinner held by the Norman Food and Shelter. Not only will there be pies, turkey, and everything in between, but also winter coats for those in need. The Food and Shelter holds the dinner for those without access to a warm meal on the holiday. Anybody's welcome to come. It's completely free. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. And you can take to-go plates with you if you want to take, you know, some stuff home for later. Like, we have more than enough food. You can swing by and grab a plate on Thanksgiving Day from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Norman High School. And after years of the intense rivalry between the Thunder and the Warriors, they take the court tonight in San Francisco. Yeah, both teams are sitting well below 500. Makes for a different matchup than we're used to. Carly, what can we expect from the game tonight? If the trend continues, you'll be expecting another win for the Thunder. Although they're not the only o Oklahoma basketball team in action tonight. Stay tuned because sports is straight ahead. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Carly Vargas and it's time for sports. 28-24 was the score when the final whistle blew, securing the Sooners a spot in this year's Big 12 title for the third season in a row. Game day use Sam Brown and Shyla Ellis tell us of how OU pulled off the win. Well, it was senior night here at the Palace on the Prairie, so what better way to close it out than with two seniors? Sam Brown, Shiloh Sellers breaking down the Sooners. 28-24 to win over the TCU Horn Frogs in kind of a weird game, really. OU yes. outgaining the Horn Frogs by almost 300 yards on offense, and yet they almost lose. Uh, Shiloh, <laughs> what do you make of all that? Well, the same thing that has been plaguing the Sooners plagued them tonight. It's ball security. Jalen had a fumble and an interception on the night, um, and that just gives away a win to be quite frank but overall a really strong game from our running back community committee especially Kennedy Brooks um, and then on the other side of the ball Buki had a really nice INT uh, just to end the game out uh, exploded in excitement ran for a quick 
photog moment. <laughs> um, and it, I mean, everybody just went wild. It ended it right there. And by then, they knew that the Big 12 championship was on their to do list. So that's always exciting. Some really great football. Yeah, the defense really showed out. Got to the quarterback a couple times. And then Shiloh, like she mentioned, the Buki interception at the end to seal the deal for Oklahoma. That's going to do it from us here in Norman. Because Tuesday is the last OU Nightly show, we won't be able to keep you posted through the show itself about Sooner football. But don't worry, we've got you covered. Follow us on our social media, Sam Brown OU and Shiloh underscore Sellers. We will be in Stillwater Friday for Bedlam on Saturday night. It's going to be a hectic environment. And in two weeks, we will be in Arlington for the Big 12 championship against the Baylor Bears. It's going to be a fun time, and you're going to want to stay tuned with us throughout all of it. While he didn't get much action the past two weekends, OU's C.D. Lamb has been announced as a Bolitnikoff finalist. The award recognizes the nation's most outstanding college receiver, and Lamb certainly has a case with 999 yards and 14 touchdowns this year. The winner will be announced on December 12th. And the Sooners basketball team are on the road to Kansas City, Missouri to play Stanford tonight. This will be OU's first time to play in the Hall of Fame Classic and first time to play Stanford since 1997. The Sooners are looking good out of the gates with this being Long Kruger's second time to get off to a 5-0 start. Tip-off is set for 8.30 p.m. inside the Sprint Center. Moving from college basketball to the NBA, the Thunder are facing off with the Warriors for the third time this season. OKC has won the past two with their last meetup ending with a final score of 114-108. to that tip-off is set for 9.30. And it's Thanksgiving season, but this man, it's Thanksgiving. The Bears haven't done too hot this season, so this man found a way to make the game better by sneaking in a whole pumpkin pie and a can of whipped cream to Sunday's game. Guys, I'm a Bears fan. I don't blame him. That gotta man find, is a legend. Got to find yeah. some way to entertain Who yourself. Who needs the concession stand <laughs> prices when you can bring your own pot? Exactly. Right? Just, I want to know how he did it. That's can you like, give like a play-by-play -play with exactly. that? Exactly. Didn't look Wasn't smashed at all. <laughs> Fine? Exactly. <laughs> Looks really good. Thank you, Carly. And speaking of things living, or I guess in this case Thanksgiving, Sooner Nation embraced the season of giving by showing support for an Alabama player. What fans did for Tua Tunga Vailoa amidst his injury ending season straight ahead on OU Nightly. I'm Victoria Perkins with breaking news at the OU Nightly Update Desk. The suspect that was taken into custody earlier today for the shooting in Oklahoma City following a funeral has been identified. He has been identified as Terrence Britton and will be booked into the Oklahoma County Jail on complaints of two accounts of assault with a deadly weapon and attempting to elude. That is it for now. Back to you in the studio. Sooner Nation is showing its support for Alabama quarterback Tua Tungavailoa after his season-ending injury earlier this season. Sooner fans signed an OU flag and held a sign saying prayers for Tua from Sooner Nation. The organizer wanted to show that regardless of the school's loyalties, everyone can put that aside and show love and support for any student athlete. Tunga Vailoa quoted the tweet yesterday saying, God bless Sooner Nation. Thank you. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in Norman, Oklahoma, especially on campus. OU is hosting their annual holiday lighting event right now and Trey Bell is here with a live look at the celebration. Trey? So we're out here at the 2019 Holiday Lighting Celebration. There's a whole bunch of people out here. It's a beautiful evening for this. We're a little cloudy, but we're dry. It's a perfect night. I'm here with Student Government Association President Adrian Gibbs. Adrian, tell us about what's going on here tonight. Who all's out here? Yeah, so we have the OU Holiday Light Celebration. This is an annual tradition that regardless of your faith or what you celebrate, this is a time for all of us to come together. So we're observing Muslim traditions, Jewish traditions, and also um, Christian traditions as well. So we want to make sure that, you know, we just have a fun time as a community and yeah. That's awesome. It's great to hear that, that we can bring the whole community together no matter what your faith is. Um, and for you specifically, what are you looking forward to heading into this holiday season? Right, so I think I'm just looking forward to just being together with friends, being together with family. And I think that's just the most important part is that over the, over the winter break we have time to reflect and just all be together and as a community. 
That's awesome. Adrian, well, thank you for thank agreeing you. to speak with us. It was it's wonderful out here. We're going to stay out here for just a few more minutes and kind of look around and see what's going on. But for now, we're going to toss it back to the studio. Zach, Olivia, back to you. Thank you, Trey. Now, Marissa, what do you have for a weather update for us? It looks like so much fun out there. Mm -hmm. It looks nice, but it's not going to last very long. We have rain on the way, cooler temperatures for Thanksgiving, so be prepared to take a little bit extra time traveling for your Thanksgiving holiday. But other than that, let's enjoy the weather tomorrow and Wednesday. Exactly. Get a little bit of chill time before the oh, bad storms. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and thank you guys for tuning in to OU Nightly. We're live every... We're live every day from Gaylord Hall on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 430. Have a great evening. Good night and have a happy Thanksgiving.